Hello, this is a brief introduction to ArcGIS Pro. This will be uh, applicable to my classes in Geography 2020, 34, 35, and Applied GIS. So this isn't going to be an all-encompassing introduction to ArcGIS Pro. We're going to be looking at a basic functionality and description of the terms that we'll be using and applying in this class. So when we look at our ArcGIS Pro, it looks a lot like our, our previous versions of uh, ArcMap. You can see in the left, we have what we call our Table of Contents. Within these table of contents, we have our individual feature classes. So here we have feature classes, one called Major NC Cities, North Carolina Counties. We have uh, census tracts here that I've attributed, turned on and turned off that highlight, uh, that highlight uh, food deserts at the uh, census tract level. And then we have zip codes here as well. If I go back here to project, I can create brand new maps, catalog scenes, local scenes as well. But I've already opened up the A uh, the uh, Arc, uh, ArcGIS Pro project, which has a different extension from our MXDs. So I've already gone through and added data. Now there's ways that I can add data. I can add data from a number of different places here. So if I go to my folders right here or go to my individual databases, you'll see there's the feature classes that are already sitting in these this database. And in this case, these are gonna be relatively mapped as opposed to absolutely mapped that we looked at previously. So I have a number of uh, tables, standalone tables, and then I have my feature classes. And I have some points and I have some polygons here as well. And so you can see that I've added these. Now these particular databases are sitting, they're going to be sitting on my hard drive. Now these days with our content, if I go down to portal, I have a number of other ways that I can add GIS data. So I can go to my content or my organization. So if I go to my organization right here, you can see a number of features that I've created. If I expand this here, I'm using ArcGIS Collector to create a, collect features out in the field. So I can add this point feature or whatnot. And I click OK, and you can see this brand new point feature that's been added. You can see it's been added to Northern Guilford County and another one in Durham. Uh, another one in Durham here. And I can zoom in and we can look at the individual attributes of this as well. So these are just some features that I'm collecting near my house. And if I uncheck these, you can see some of the features that I've collected around my house. These are all data that are residing on the cloud. So let me zoom back out, go back to add data. And so in addition to the databases that are linked, I can browse my computer. So if they're sitting on a temp drive or another database that's not, that wasn't created in support of that wasn't created in support of uh, our working project, I do have these. I have just a number of different things that I've created as part of the NCCU work group that we have here. So I have a NCCU, I have different work groups here. So within my organization, this is the individual content that I've created myself. So I've got some projects with publishing, uh, Oxford, North Carolina, uh, some of my landmarks that I've talked about and uh, alluded to as well. So this is some of my data that I've created as part of this. But I can go to ArcGIS Online and just type in some keywords. And then Living Atlas, a lot of these data are collected as part of, uh, from Esri. So I can type in the word, say, poverty. And it'll highlight all of the poverty level. Uh, these are boundaries and centroids from Esri demographics. And I can add these in and I can export these. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later in future uh, tutorials. So if I go back here, you can see my zip codes. Now we have feature classes right here, and then each of these feature classes are made up of individual features. So say for zip codes, I can right mouse click and I have a context menu. So I can copy this feature, I can remove it, I can run some designs, create charts, zoom to this particular layer, label it, which would be difficult in this case here. And I'm gonna open up attribute table. Now, if I go to attribute table, you can see there's 763 individual zip codes within my feature class. So we have 763 features within this single feature class. And these are the terms that we'll, we'll cover as we work through the book. Now, they, they're described using a number of different attributes. I'm going to go all the way to the right here. And I, in this case, I've been collecting COVID rates. So these are COVID rates as of... April 17th, 2021. These are COVID rates as of uh, March 17th, 2021. And I have a number of other 
attributes. There's about 100 that I've collected in support of my projects. And so you can see all the way to the left here, this is the name of it, the idea, since it's a zip code, the total population, the household population, the family population, group quarters, population density. Now, any of these particular fields, I can map. Okay, Some of these are going to be nominal data. Some of these are going to be attribute data. Uh, some of these are going to be numerical data. So this is categorical categorical data where we're looking at urban or rural and these these are numer numerical data that have some innate values with these and then some of these we're looking at change detection so I've put put these into different classifications or whatnot so for this I'd like to map this and I can right mouse click and sort ascending and sort descending you can see I have a few null values here when I imported this from the North Carolina COVID-19 dashboard. So I do have a few null values. And you notice these are some of the challenges in working with real world, uh, real world data. And so I have some null values. I don't know the reasons. I've got a couple of zeros. And then all the way to the bottom here, 3527. And these are rates per 10,000 people. So this is about 35.27. And I can highlight over here. And I can see the zip code that I've highlighted on my table is highlighted on the map. And this is the power and value of GIS where that I can click on the map. It has this one-to-one -one relationship using the record and the feature. So we have a record and a feature. And likewise, I have some buttons up here and we'll explore these really briefly. I have something called select. So I can select using a rectangle and I can just grab a couple of these polygons right here. And you can see I've selected 13 different zip codes. I can click this button down at the attribute table and you can see the 13 that I've highlighted here. And you can see the names of these and all the way to the left here, you can see the names as well as the COVID rates. And then I can clear these. Now I can navigate this as well and I'll X out of this. And so I can use my pointer or my roller on my mouse to zoom in and to zoom out. Okay, and I can zoom in and zoom out. And notice at the bottom, it changes my scale. This is what we call our verbal scale here. So here it's 1 to 4,561,637. And as also I move around, I've got my latitude and my longitude here. You notice the longitude's first and the latitude second. And so this is in what we call decimal degrees. And I can change the notation as well, degrees, minutes, and seconds. Now it's displaying in degrees, minutes, seconds. UTM, this is called Universal Transverse Mercator. Mercator, feet, meters, US feet. I'll just put it back to my decimal degrees. So different ways of displaying it on different coordinate systems. And so I can explore this. Okay. So now I can hold this and pan. And zoom out using my roller. And then I can select, select by attributes and select by location. We'll talk about later. And the last thing we'll talk about for this particular class is just to measure. So I can measure distance. So I can measure distance, area, or measure features. I'm going to just measure distance. And under planar, I can pick miles, but I can pick metric, imperial, feet, US feet. I'm just going to click this here. I'm just going to measure the width of North Carolina all the way across. And now you can see this segment here was about 609 miles with a bearing of 69 degrees and path distance here. And I'll go back and X out of this. So really briefly, we have a way of exploring these data here. And this is some of the point data that I've collected as part of my ArcGIS project. And so I've got a description, a landmark type, shape. And while I'm collecting those, I've been taking pictures of those that haven't been imported into these cloud data. So I can move back and forth. I can explore the data. I can open up the attribute table. So here for counties, we can see that there is 100 counties. And I can sort these. Now, when I work with nominal data, sorting is, is what we call alphabet, alphabet, alphabetizing. But you can see POP 2010, POP 2013. We have our different age, race, uh, demographics that are collected at the SF1 level. And so, in, as we move further and further along, we'll talk about the select by attributes, the select by location, combining these, as well as some of the field manipulations that we can do.